Hello everyone and welcome back to the channel. My name is Kitty and I'm an academic surgical trainee in the UK now in my ST2 year of vascular surgery. We're approaching that time of the year again where medical students have to start thinking about applying to the Specialised Foundation Programme or the SFP, which is generally something not talked about all that much in medical school. So today, having been through it myself, I'm going to share with you my experience of the SFP, which I completed over a year ago, what I did, what I got out of it, and reflect on my honest thoughts on the opinions of the good and bad of the programme and what opportunities the SFP has led me to. Bear in mind, this is, of course, my experience only, and the SFP programme really varies very widely across the UK. If you're particularly looking to apply this year and you want some more practical details of the application process and how you can prepare for it, have a look at the dedicated series on my channel linked in the description below. So in case you're in a rush, here's an upfront summary of how I found the SFP. Did I enjoy it? Yes! Overall, I think I got a lot out of the programme, including six publications and eight international and national presentations. Even if it was frustrating and stressful at times, it has definitely opened a lot of doors for me and paved the way for my future academic career as an academic clinical fellow and allowed me to develop lasting relationships with really important mentors that I think otherwise would have been difficult as a clinical trainee. I would highly recommend the SFP to anybody interested in research. Okay, so now that's out of the way, let's dive into the details. If you don't know what the SFP is, it essentially gives you 25% research time as a foundation doctor to complete some sort of academic activity, which is focused either on research, education or leadership. Personally, I was on the research track, having dabbled in a few projects in medical school, which I really enjoyed, and I applied to the SFP essentially to give myself time to do research and to investigate whether a career as a clinical academic was for me. In my programme in Bristol, as an F1, you would do your three, four month clinical rotations just like everyone else, not in an SFP programme. So you are essentially 100% clinical, same as everybody else. I think the purpose of this was really to allow you to just get used to being a doctor as a fresh medical graduate, which I did appreciate. For me anyway, I mean, when I started working, I found it impossible to do anything else aside from just work in the first couple of months as a doctor. And there was definitely a very steep learning curve that demanded all my attention and energy. But later in the year, once I got the hang of the job a little bit better, it was definitely possible to start doing some research outside of clinical work. In F2, this is when we are given 25% of academic time. In my case, this was one day a week of academic time in two of my clinical blocks, which was stroke and GP. And then we had a four month academic block where you were dedicated to your academic work, but you had to do one day a week of clinical work which for me was in ED. Overall, I found this structure quite good because it allowed you to take on both a more labour intensive project in the four month block, but also allow time for you to carry on a project's longer term throughout the year if you wanted to with the academic days. We also had weekly academic teaching on our academic days, uh, which I'll go into in a little bit. And as I said earlier, the structure of the SFP can really be very, very different depending on the deanery that you go to. And some places will do day releases throughout the two years of foundation training. Other places might do two four month blocks. Other places might just do one four month block. So do take this into account when you're applying or planning your project. So in terms of the weekly teaching, this covered a variety of topics for us in Bristol. So it included research methodology, research ethics, funding, career opportunities, presentation skills and medical education. Generally, I thought the teaching that we received was pretty decent and it gave an introductory overview of the different type of research skills and concepts to someone who is very new to the world of academia. I will say that personally, I kind of wish that teaching was a little bit more advanced, especially in terms of more in-depth research methodology, because sometimes it did feel a bit like they were pitching this to people with no experience, no knowledge at all in research. But, you know, the reality is that most of us have had to have some sort of experience to be able to get into the program in the first place so I did wish that it was a little bit more in depth. However in the same thing I think you can also argue that um, many SFP doctors may not have had experience in say systematic reviews or qualitative studies so I guess it's also fair to keep most sessions more basic. In Bristol the good thing is that we're also given funding to attend some university level short courses which did go into much more in-depth methodology for example a four-day course on systematic reviews or a two-day course on the introduction to R and things like that and they were really high 
high quality so this was a really good option for us if you had any particular skills you wanted to develop. So on to the main project for my SFP and this might surprise some of you but I actually had a renal themed SFP project despite wanting to do surgery since medical school. The reason for this is not because I was secretly a budding nephrologist because I'm not smart enough for that but that there was a limited number of SFP posts for each specialty in Bristol. So essentially, I didn't rank high enough to get the surgical post when I applied. However, I still wanted the research time and experience associated with the SFP, so I took the post because I thought there were lots of crossover between renal medicine and vascular surgery. Unfortunately, despite trying to coordinate this early, my plans for a vascular-related project fell through a bit because of COVID-19 restrictions, so we couldn't really harvest or access any animal grass easily like we planned to. So instead I ended up doing a four month lab based project looking at the effect of spironolactone inhibition on glomerular endothelial cells exposed to a diabetic media, which to be honest, I'm not sure I completely understand to this day. I did get a publication out of this, which is okay, but I think more importantly, I realised that translational lab-based research was really not the thing for me, and that I enjoy clinical research that I did in medical school much more. And despite being a little bit disappointed by this at the time, looking back, I would actually say this is still a very valuable experience, because part of being an early career researcher is finding out what interests you and what does doesn't interest you. And so having experienced both sides of lab-based research and clinical epidemiological research, um, you know, I was able to talk about the benefits and disadvantages of both of these, and especially in my interview for f future academic posts for the ACF, I think this came across very well. And surprisingly, doing this project has actually also helped to equip me with some knowledge for the MRCS Part B exam, which you wouldn't have thought. In the OSCE, I was asked about the process of immunohistochemistry, which is is clearly something that every surgeon needs to know and the only reason I knew the answer was because this was something that I had to do multiple times in the lab during that four month block under a big sign that said immunohistochemistry in my desk. So I think the lesson here is that even if you don't end up doing exactly what you wanted in the SFP it is still very educational regardless and you never know what you might learn and how it might come in handy in the future. And that wasn't all I managed to do during my two years as an SFP trainee. Because of my own interest in vascular surgery, outside of the renal lab project, I was also able to um, arrange with certain consultants and professors to essentially keep doing some vascular research, which is largely thanks to the academic day release that I explained earlier that lasted throughout the year for me. During this time, I managed to be a first author on two systematic reviews that went on to inform international clinical guidelines. I worked with the UK Vascular Society and the James Lind Alliance to develop national research priority setting in amputation research with patients and the public, as well as some other projects which all provided me with important skills key to progressing as an academic. I also led and organised the National Access the SFP course to help other medical students get into the SFP, and we managed to gain some national affiliation with the UK Medical Schools Council and the CATCH initiative for ongoing widening participation research. So for more of this, overall I was able to get five publications in addition to the Renal Lab project, as well as eight international and national presentations and a national prize, which is really not bad at all. In all these conferences, I also networked and met lots of other colleagues who became my friends, my mentors, and others who approached me to contribute to their research in turn. To give you an idea of some of the perks as well of being an academic, I was able to attend a funded conference in Rome to present my research last year, and I had an absolutely great time going around to see the Colosseum and everything else. Perhaps most importantly, I was able to successfully apply to the NIHR Academic Clinical Fellowship on ACF in vascular surgery, which is the kind of next step along the integrated academic clinical pathway, if you like, after the SFP. I felt that the SFP itself was a very important contributor to a successful application, not only because of the research experience and skills and output that I was able to get, but also because it really helped me demonstrate my ability to balance a clinical and academic career, which I already have had to do in the SFP. The skills I learnt in the SFP also helped to set me up, I think, to start to do more complex projects in the ACF 
left and really sort of hit the ground running. Um, I'm now supervising medical students. I get involved in reviewer work for peer reviewed journals, and I'm currently preparing for a PhD application. So having been through it all, I think the biggest advantages of the SFP is that you get dedicated time to do research, which is extremely valuable. I also think that at the end of the day, you just learn a lot by doing research, both in terms of research methodology and also in your specialty of interest, which is never a bad thing. One of the best things about doing research is that you can contribute to evidence-based medicine even very, very early on in your career. And hopefully I've showcased that with how my research was able to impact, you know, clinical guidelines that is applied internationally. And I think it was really nice to see how your research can translate to your day-to-day -day job as a doctor on the ward and bring about changes in the system to improve healthcare across, you know, not just your trust, but the country and maybe even worldwide. And I think this is otherwise, unfortunately, really hard to achieve as a purely clinical doctor, where your priority might just be the patient in front of you at the time. And of course, the SFP can potentially open a lot of doors and set you up for future academic opportunities like progressing along the academic pathway to an ACF or doing a higher degree in MD or a PhD down the line, which again can be really, really valuable in terms of building your career. Another aspect of being an SFP doctor that I found really enjoyable was the autonomy and the different challenge that you get outside of clinical medicine. I think that as a junior doctor these days, you're often following another senior person's plans for important decisions for the patients that you look after. But in research, I found that you really get to take ownership of the projects that you're doing and have some independence in the decision making. And I personally found that this, you know, as a junior doctor as an F1 and F2, research was often more cognitively stimulating and engaging than um, just being service provision on the ward, which unfortunately, uh, whether you like it or not, is a large part of foundation training in the UK. Last but not least, and I would say perhaps even most importantly, through the SFP, you really get to form lifelong working relationships with clinicians, researchers and mentors, especially again, due to the rotational nature of foundation training these days, you know, you're thrown around to different departments or hospitals or even across the country every four months, six months and 12 months. And personally, I think that this makes it very, very difficult to foster any sort of mentoring relationship with your seniors, no matter how enthusiastic you are. And in a lot of ways, looking back, I have found that academia is really the only avenue I had available to keep working with the same consultants over a number of years. And this has really helped develop a sense of belonging for me, um, where my bosses are invested in me and care about my training and care about my career and care about me because they know I'm going to be working with them long term. These are people that I can now go to advise for just about anything in terms of clinical problems, academic problems, personal life problems. They have done so much for me in shaping my career. So I really can't say enough about how invaluable developing these relationships are. That's not to say you can't develop the same relationships in a normal foundation program, but I just think that the rotational aspect of it hinders it so much that it just makes it very difficult. There are unfortunately some downsides of being an SFP doctor as well, and I am a big fan of being transparent about the process for everyone looking to apply. First off, there is really no guarantee for any output whatsoever. So just because you got onto the SFP program doesn't mean that automatically you're going to get publications or presentations or any prizes. At the end of the day, you will get out of it what you put in. And hopefully I have shown you that in my experience, you know, the renal project was very much led by the supervisors that I was assigned to and I kind of just followed the plan and I got you know a reasonable output of a publication but it was really the additional effort and planning um, that I've put in that really resulted in the big rewards. Secondly uh, something that I'm sure everybody has said to you at some point is that at the end of the day as an academic trainee you will have less time than your clinical colleagues to achieve your clinical competencies. Personally, I think meeting the clinical competencies of foundation training is not really an issue. I think that in some heavy service provision jobs, I even found the academic time an excellent way to, you know, uh, break away from being a ward monkey, have a bit of release, actually engage my brain and enjoy my work. But equally on good rotations where you have a clinical interest, the academic time might mean that you then have less opportunity to be around and to learn. I think this is much more apparent to me now as a surgical trainee. So for example, if I wasn't on an academic 
academic day, I would likely be learning in clinic or operating in theatre. So I think as you progress, the more senior you get, the more you do notice that there is a deficit in clinical time. Of course, from the academic side, you will also have the pressure to produce output, whether that's externally from a supervisor or your institution, or in my experience, most commonly, it's going to be pressure from yourself on having to get something out of your time as an SFP trainee. And, you know, in academia, the deadlines don't wait for you to have your academic day, right? So it might mean that at times you will just have to work outside in your own time, work outside the designated time, which I think if you're not careful can really impact negatively on your well-being. I think that when I tell people what I've achieved in my career so far, everyone says that, oh, this sounds like you're really successful, you've done a lot, you've got loads out of it, well done. But what they don't really see, I guess, is that there were definitely times where I've been close to being burnt out and definitely times that I was burnt out from taking on too much. So my opinion is that the academic pathway is hard and you're going to have to develop skills to cope <laughs> and manage your own mental health and well-being whether that means learning how to say no to people learning how to say no to taking on too many things um, and you know having your hobbies and maintaining them in order to remain you know having a, a healthy work-life balance and ultimately, I think the stress of having to produce academic output whilst you're just learning to be a good and capable clinician can mean that you have to work a little bit harder than your full-time clinical colleagues. Um, and you really, as I say, you really have to safeguard your own mental health and well-being. So in summary, I think that the SFP is potentially a very rewarding opportunity to develop your academic career. And it certainly has opened a lot of doors for me in research and beyond. I think that it does have its challenges and frustrating moments like many things in life, but in my opinion, overall the benefits far outweigh the disadvantages, and if I had the choice to go back in time, I would 100% do it all over again, even if I had to learn nephrology. So if you're thinking about applying to the SFP, my only tip really is to be proactive as early as possible and try get involved in whatever research you can. Find senior peers who have been through the process and ask them for advice. Um, you know, look for opportunities that are available to you as a medical student. Ask other people how they have done it and what, you know, supervisors are out there and what sort of projects can you get involved in. Do check out my other series on the practicalities of applying to the SFP as well on my channel, which will be linked in the description below. I hope that you found this video helpful. Don't forget to leave a like and subscribe for more content like this. That's it for now and I'll see you next time.